Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna show you all how I connected these LEDs under the bonnet. And it's an epic way to be able to see things easily at night. Um, you don't need to worry about holding your phone and trying to you know, check some oil or you know, change your headlight globe that's blown. So it's such an easy you know, process. And as we can see, you get an amazing amount of light. Let's get to it. I'll show you all how it's done. I'd like to take you all through some of the parts and tools that you'll need to be able to complete this job. Of course, you'll need your LEDs, and this is a waterproof uh, stretch of LEDs that I've bought off eBay a while ago, but I'll put a link in the description below. Of course, you'll need some wiring, you know, cable connector ends, and uh, that'll let you make your connections. Of course, you need some wire. Make sure you get something that's got a thick enough gauge so that your wire doesn't burn up. Um, you'll need something like four to five meters worth of cable. Of course, a switch. Uh, feel free to grab any type of switch that you like. Um, you'll need a socket set. All you need is a 10 millimeter and 13 millimeter sockets. Um, here I'm using some locking pliers to be able to crimp on the cable to the cable ends. Um, a screwdriver, a um, set of wire strippers, this is a trim removal tool, just makes life easier later on. You'll need some cable ties. And um, here I'd like to show you all a pack of these fuse holders. They're inline fuse holders that I ordered from eBay. There was like 10 of them, quite cheap. And this is what's gonna make sure that our modification today has a fail safe. Uh, so in case there's any issues, the fuse can blow and it can avoid any fires and any dramas. Okay guys, and now we're going to go shove our fingers into the unknown, find the flap, flap it to the side, and <laughs> off we go, she's open. <laughs> okay, now under the fuse and relay box cover, there's actually two points of access for positive and negative. One positive here, and one negative here. We're going to run a positive down along and actually connect it to one side of the fuse holder, the other side to the switch, and then from the switch, we're going to run the cabling along and tuck it away out of sight under the guard all the way along up starting up the bonnet side underneath the bonnet liner keep going with that positive cable all the way up until our location where we want to have our LED strip and just to show you all this is the loose area that I'd planned to put the LED strip um, as that was the most flattest part of the top of the bonnet and once I visualized exactly where I was gonna put the LED um, I started with the wiring Okay, so first up, we use our wire strippers to remove some of the insulation off the end of this wire, which is going to connect to the positive side under the fuse box cover. So here I use a ring terminal you know, wire end, and I'm going to use a set of locking pliers to help crimp down the connection so the wire won't come loose. And I always like to tighten up my locking pliers one more time and recompress the crimp so that way the wire is nice and snug and won't fall out. Next, I remove the cover and it's a 13 millimeter nut that gives us access to the connection to the positive. Now at this stage, once you remove this nut here guys, don't go clamping down your positive wire that we just uh, crimped onto that ring terminal as you don't want your wire to go through and actually short on anything. So for now I just remove this nut ready for a future stage when I'm ready to clamp it down. With that nut removed, this is where our ring terminal will bolt down and then we can tuck our wires out of sight and around the fuse box itself. And this end of the wire now we want to go and connect to our inline fuse holder. So again here I'm going to go through do the same thing, remove some of the insulation with that insulation removed, I've got a wire to wire, female to female crimpable joiner here. And I'll crimp one side onto the wire that goes to the inline fuse and do the same. Grab a female to female joiner, crimp that on the other end of the inline fuse. With our inline fuse sorted and ready to be connected to, now we can go through, get our ring terminal that's gonna give us our access of our positive and bolt this down with the 13 millimeter nut. Now 
Here I've decided to actually go and undo the bolts that hold the expansion tank so that way I can actually get the wires tucked out of sight uh, more easily. So this is going to give us more access to be able to tuck the wires away and also I undo the bolt that's holding this side of the fuse box as that will also again allow me to tuck the wire underneath here more easily. The expansion tank comes away very easily, lift upward and slightly rotate towards the engine side and you can leave all of the hoses connected. Now that the expansion tank is out of the way, we've got some great access to be able to go through and um, tuck our cables around the fuse box itself. Okay, now we can go through and tuck our wire around the fuse box out of sight. I ended up doing it around the bottom and underneath this side tab of the fuse box at the back here. So that way it was nicely tucked out of sight all the way around. Then I've gone through and cut some of the excess wire away and I've prepared this end to actually go through and connect to the inline fuse. So our positive from the positive connection is now getting crimped to one side of the inline fuse. With this side completed, now we can go through. I actually opted to just use a little amount of wire to act as an extension to plug into the actual switch. So here I've gone and prepared <clears throat> another stretch of wire and I'm crimping on a female blade um, type of connection that will go into the switch. And the other end of this wire, I'm just going to cut something like, say, 15 centimeters. Go through and strip off a little bit of the insulation off the end of the wire. And on this end of the wire, I'm going to go and crimp onto the inline fuse section here. So now guys, that's our positive all connected inline fuse and we can just plug it into the switch. And this is what the completed setup looks like. We've got our positive tapped in here, the wire run along into the inline fuse and then into the switch. Now we want to run some cables under the bonnet liner. So we can use our trim removal tool here to remove these little plastic plugs. Now they do tend to break, so you might need to get a spare set up your sleeve. Okay, with three clips removed on the left hand side of the lining, we can see here that I've gained some good access to be able to run my wires from the top down to the bottom. Now, what I start off with is holding the LED strip in the rough position of where I want it to end up. And I'm going to look through and make a mark of where I want the wires of the LED strip, of where I want the actual wires to actually poke through. So I use my fingers as a bit of a reference point and I give it a little bit of a scratch. So that gives me a bit of a mark. I'll come back with a screwdriver and give a little bit of a spin and a push through and that pierces through the carpet and the lining very easily without much fuss. Now off camera I went through and used a, a little stretch of wire um, for the negative. So one side to connect to the LED strip and the other side that ring terminal to connect to a chassis point. So I used a positive and negative terminal ends for the LED strip and poking them through 
the earlier pierced hole. Now with that done, I'm able to go through and connect the negative wiring, so the negative wire from the LED strip. Male to female get connected here. And I'll then be able to run the wire down. Just to show you all here, male to female of the negative connected. I'm able to then take that wiring behind the liner and actually bolt it down. This is a bonnet hinge bolt that I'd removed and planned to use as my earthing point. Just like to show you here that I ran the earth wire down, tucked it right behind the bonnet liner and poked it out through the bottom section here. With our ring terminal over the hole of where the bolt used to be, we can now bolt down the bonnet hinge bolt and tighten it up. With that done, we can go and tuck any remaining loose cables of the negative underneath the actual lining. And now we can move to the positive wire. <clears throat> so, for the positive wire, what I did was run the cable from behind this section of the hinge here, and I'll be planning to again simply tuck this behind the actual lining itself and bring it up to the LED. You want to tuck this cable behind the gas strut area there. And once we've done that, we're able to go through actually take the remaining wire up to the LED itself. So now we've got both the positive and the negative connected. We can go through and just tuck in all of the excess positive wiring behind the cable. I just pull down some of the excess and then tuck in whatever's hanging out. Now to make it as clean as possible, I go and remove any of the excess before this hinge section here. Now with the positive line tucked well cleanly behind the liner and around this section of the hinge, we can go through and tuck it underneath the actual guard. So to do that, if we open this bolt here there's another bolt in the middle, a bolt here, and then a bolt for the headlight. That'll then let us and give us some wiggle room for the actual guard there. And we'll be able to more easily tuck in the cable and route it underneath the guard so it's out of sight and away from the elements. So here, I just started tucking the cable from around this hinge section, removing all of the excess and starting to actually tuck in. I've removed this little weather seal and start to tuck in the wires underneath the guard. Just very simply, just by fingers, we're able to tuck it so it doesn't shift around, move around, out of the elements. Pop that weather seal back in and continue running this line all the way down the guard. A little fiddly one-handed. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. Just be careful for sharp edges. Don't rush like I did. And with that tucked nice and cleanly under the guard, we can go through and bolt back the guard itself. So we'll go and bring one of the bolts and just hand tight get it started for now. With my wires tucked in from the back section of the guard, underneath the midsection and all the way to the front. I've then run it along some of the factory wiring here, difficult to see on camera, but now I can take the wire underneath this section of the fuse box with the cable successfully 
pushed underneath the tab for the fuse box area here. We're now very close. We can go through, cut any excess cable, and then crimp on a terminal so that it can get uh, plugged into the switch. So here I'm just tri trimming off some of the excess wire. Crimping a female blade terminal on the end of the wire. And now we can go through and plug it into the switch. And that is a job done. Well, just about. <laughs> We've got to clean up some of the wiring and tidy everything up. And here we can test it by switching the switch on and then switching it off and switching it on. Perfect. So it's all working. Very nice. Now we can go through and put everything back. So I'll start off with the coolant expansion tank itself. Making sure the wires aren't pinching on anything. For now I'm just gonna loosely place the switch itself in this little corner section of the expansion tank. Grab some of the bolts. This one's for the side of the fuse box. That can go back in. And then the bolts for the expansion tank. And don't forget to tighten up the bolts on the guard as well. And also the bolts here for the headlight. Now all that's left is to go through and mount up the actual LED strip itself. And for this, what I'm planning to do is uh, just use a flathead screwdriver and pierce another couple holes for the cable ties to actually go around the back of the liner and hold the LED strip in place. I found using cable ties to hold the LED strip up was quite easy and also very reversible should I ever need to take the LEDs out one day. They're not glued on, they're not double-sided taped on, and they're working very well. So at this stage, I'll go one more time for luck, test it all, make sure it's all still working.